Tuesday night to laugh at all our pain. Evening in the parents' lounge is the cure to staying sane. Thank you to everybody stopping by the parents' lounge here on a Tuesday night. I'm Jamie Kaler with my uh, my cohorts Jason Gowan and Kate Mulligan. Hey guys, how are you? <laughs> Good I you. am fantastic. Got a special Thursday show. I know. That's right. I forget. It's a Thursday. It's a special Thursday show here. And if you're watching this live, thank you for tuning in on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch or Twitter. And if you're listening to this on iTunes, then come catch us live because it's uh, it's in the moment. And we can take all of your questions for our wonderful guests this evening or comments that we like to pop up. Hello from Peru, says Baliaro. We hot. are. I love that. We, I, I'm assuming they're here for Andrea, but I we may have a huge Peru following. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I love <laughs> Peru. I'm all over Peru. Uh, we have a fantastic show, and I, I don't want to keep her waiting because we're we're so lucky to have her tonight. Um, huge fans. Uh, she is uh, a wonderful person. You might know her from the days of our lives, Full House, Fuller House, and hopefully one day the fullest house uh, as the character Kimmy Gibbler. She is an author probably from her English degree from Whittier College. She's very, very smart. Uh, she is an author. She wrote the book Full Circle from Hollywood to Real Life and Back Again. She's been in every Christmas movie ever made. <laughs> and she has a fantastic Full House rewatch podcast with Jody Sweeten called How Rude Tanneritos. Please welcome Andrea Barber. Ah, Hello. Hi. That was hi. such a nice intro. Thank I you. Know. I yeah. worked on it. It, oh, honestly, I never, and I don't. I never. Oh, I'm just as as tickled by it. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank also, you so much for coming on. We're really excited to have oh, you. Um, thanks for inviting me. Uh, here's I've done a lot of kids shows where I did like uh, Shake It Up, Saved by the Bell, Austin and Alley, tons and tons of these. And it's you might be one of four child actors who successfully made it to adulthood. Uh, and so congratulations on that. Oh, right thank you. Shoot. Or I mean, maybe I'm just putting on a good act. You, maybe. you never know. <laughs> I'm going to go in the back and smoke some blow. And, or, you know, no, no, I'm not doing that. Don't do that, kids. I don't see know how she said, see how she said friendly. smoke the blow so that we know she's joking. But you I don't know what the blow. terms are. Is that even? I don't know what the terms I think are. You, don't, I don't know. Smoke the blow. Mulligan, you've definitely smoked some blow before. Listen, I will tell you mostly blow is snorted. But that oh, being said, okay. you do you. Okay. You know, I believe People Richard Pryor, they used to, they did smoke it. You would smoke cocaine. But well, we're off. We're off to a running start here. So the full house crowd is completely confused and lost right now. By the way, I will tell you, I have never seen the chat. I don't know if you saw Andrea. Like as the chat, the, the three of us are just doing a quick intro, and people are already like, "Where is Andrea? Oh. <laughs> Where is she? Dare you do the intro? We're just going to fade into the background, and Andrea has prepared uh, her own one-woman show that she will be performing over the next hour. It's going to be fantastic. Um, so sweet. Oh. You uh, have a book. I can't. Book. How do you? How do you sit down and write a book? You actually went. You, you were a child actor. You went. You got a degree. You had kids. You had a life, and now you're kind of back doing um, entertainment and stuff. But uh, you know, how is it with juggling two little kids these days? Well, I have two big kids now. How, I, how old are your kids? Wait, how old are your kids? Because I, I don't think people know. 
Yeah, well, I, and I only know you guys because of the intro. I watched it. I'm like, oh, they've got little kids. Um, I have a 16-year-old girl and a 19-year-old boy. I call him my baby adult because yeah. he's an adult, but he's kind of a baby. My so mom baby. also calls me that. Yeah, still, right? <laughs> Mine are 10 and 8. Jason's younger than me. and Kate Yeah, I have a 7-year-old and twin 4-year-old boys. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. I'm tired. Yeah, I'm it. tired just hearing about that. Yeah, I know. So I've you're kind of a um, you're like um, Jacob Marley. You're like the future door knocker. But what's oh, to man. come for us? You're no, that's too much pressure. I was hoping to get advice from somebody out there who we have, we lives have with teenagers. <laughs> it's no. always on edge. That's okay. You can be moral support. You know. Well, let me ask you this, Andrea, because I imagine growing up in show. Well, I don't know. Were your parents in show business at all, or is this sort of uncharted territory for you having this wildly successful show? And I think arguably being the most popular character on that show. Oh, no, uh, no, 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 no. Truly. I mean, maybe, maybe Michelle Tanner, but like, <laughs> I mean, I just feel like you're, you must have either had, you just must have had great parents. You must have learned from people that were like, we're going to keep you grounded. Or was that not the situation? I'm curious to know what you grew up with. Yeah, no, I, I had very grounded parents um, They and they weren't in show business at all. Like this wasn't a, a lifelong dream or what, you know, it was, we kind of went into it with ignorance. You know, my, our, our family hobby was doing community theater, like the whole family together. So we would do a Christmas carol and other types of, you know, family holiday shows. Um, and it was there that I was discovered by my agent who was looking for fresh talent. And so long story short, she signed me and my two older brothers right there on the spot. And um, we tr all tried it out. And I had a lot of luck, I think, because I was a, a little girl who was cute with pigtails. Um, and my brothers, they were successful too, but they were older. So by the time they got to high school, they were like, this sucks. Like, we don't want to keep auditioning and auditioning. Like, it takes up a lot of time. Yes. It, um, yes it even does. if you're not employed, it's still you're still going on auditions or taking headshots or doing things like that. So um, so they quit once they got to high school. They're like, we want to play varsity sports and we're done with Hollywood. And that was great. My parents supported that. Um, and I was like, OK, well, I'm going to keep going. And not just because I'm on co under contract with some of these shows. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I genuinely enjoyed it and had good balance in my life, um, mainly because I wasn't I didn't live in Hollywood. Like I've always lived in Orange County, California. And so I didn't go to parties like I didn't do I didn't do the Hollywood scene at all. Um, I was at home, you know, either making my bed or going to the Friday night football game at my high school, you know, doing very normal kid things. And I had a good group of friends at school growing up. So I think the fact that I stayed out of Hollywood for a lot of the time too, that must yes. have helped as well. Yeah. That, that's the theory I'm going with. I don't know. But theory. I do credit my parents. I do credit my parents with always, they never pushed me. They were like, anytime this doesn't get fun, you can quit. You just can't quit in on the middle of the freeway of the 101 in, in you know, weekday traffic. Yes. You know, but if, <laughs> if you want to quit like over a weekend, you know, think about it and then write a letter to your agent. Um, and if you want to quit, we support you. And I did take a six month hiatus. I was like, you know, I was, it was in How between shows. Oh gosh. I was definitely a young teen. So I want to say 13, 14, maybe 15. Um, and yeah, I was just like, I just don't want to do this for six months. And I wasn't under contract during those six months. So they were like, okay, just write a letter to your agent. And I said, I'm taking a six month break. And she was like, all right, let me know when you're back. And I was it. I was just a kid wow. for six months, no auditions, no, like nothing. Um, no picture taking, no photo ops, like nothing. Um, and it was so great. Funny and I was ready to come back. Because one of the topics we have kind of listed is quitting stuff. Because nowadays, like my daughter's doing swim club. It's like yeah. 11 months of the year. Wow. And, and nobody rotates like, like we always grew up doing, you know, soccer in the fall or football and then basketball in spring was baseball. And you kind of got a well-rounded thing. But nowadays, yeah. I don't know if your kids are past this or they're a little older, but nowadays, like kids join clubs right out of the shoot and they're doing yeah. this thing like all year long. And my daughter, she was doing soccer. And then at one point, you know, the season wasn't even over. And she's like, she's like eight years old. And she's like, I'm done. I'm mm -hmm. done with this. Mm -hmm. And part of me was like, you you finish what you started. But then finally I was like, yeah, I'm done too. I feel like, I feel like we're both done at this point. I'm done driving you four nights it's a week. It's a full-time job for the parent full and the child yeah. too. But yeah. I did have this thing about, you know, with my kids going, you know, finish what you start. It's such a cliche, but no, it's true. 
It's true. And our seven-year-old tried quitting in the middle of the soccer season when we've told him he could no longer pretend to be a velociraptor on the field. And that was a a deal breaker for him. Oh, wow. Okay. So I was like, okay, well, you can't hunt the other children, uh, but you are going to finish the season. So (laughs) Um, what were you like that as a parent? Were you kind of on top of them to be like, I, you know, finish what you started where you're like, whatever, I don't care. In theory, yes. Like that is our philosophy too. It's like, you don't have to do this forever, but you have to finish a season or, you know, if you're doing a play, you have to finish the run of the play. Um, but it's hard when the kids are just like, eh, you know, and I, I think when they're little, it's good to, ex- to experience a lot of things. Like some of these kids that have played like major soccer since age three, yeah. they do it their whole childhood. And I'm like, but well, did you ever try baseball or you know, chess or I don't know anything else just to, that's the time to explore lots of different things. So I wanted my kids to do, you know, baseball and soccer and performing arts uh, just to get a whole wide variety of things. But it is you, hard when they're tired and cranky and whining and you got to drive that whiny person yeah. uh, to their yeah. sports practice or oh, whatever just to it drag, is. Just to gather their stuff and get out the door. I'm like, I'm like, well, I wish my kid didn't like sports at all. I wish she was just a nerd who wanted to sit in her room and play on the computer. No, go, yeah. no, you don't want that. No, either. I don't want that. No. Were your kids, um, were they, did they do a lot of sports when they were younger? My son did. He did every sport under the sun. He loved soccer. He did baseball in the summertime. Um, and he did do basketball for a season in high school. And then he just stopped. He was just like, you know what? I'm, he's more of a, he's not really a team sport kid. This is what it took me a long time to figure out. But he likes athletics, um, so he liked jiu-jitsu. He got involved in Aikido and jiu-jitsu, and he really took a liking to that. And I'm like, okay, so maybe the pressure of team sports is too much. Like, I'm remembering one game, a soccer game, where he scored a goal for the other team, you know, and he cried, and it was so – and I'm like, but I know, buddy. I know it's it's like it's a mistake, and everybody saw it. That's hard to come back <laughs> from my, my daughter did that so we're in the we're going into the fourth quarter and they try to rotate the positions and uh the i i assistant coach so i'm always like i'll assistant coach but i don't i don't want to do the lineups or anything so he yeah. goes he goes to put my daughter into net in the fourth quarter of a tie game and she's like in tears she's so afraid that she's gonna give up the game winning goal she's like yeah. i go i go dude you gotta pull her <laughs> she can't make it and she's like yeah i pulled her out of net and uh, some other kid got scored on, and that kid was just inconsolable. That oh, kid's going to no. be in therapy at like 35, but I was like, oh, so much pressure. Wasn't like it. I know it's so, so much pressure on these, so even pressure. though they get a trophy for finishing 13th. Uh, yeah. So who, it's like, who cares? At some point. But you don't want to be embarrassed in front of your, in front of your peers. You know, it's no. that peer, that peer scrutiny. Although I don't know if kids are really scrutinizing each other. Like they're so self-absorbed and insecure that I think they're too busy thinking about themselves to judge other people. You know, that's, I could that's not agree point. more. I feel like m- my son's always like, but what if they look at me? And I'm like, good luck with that. No mm-hmm. one's going to look at you. Mm-hmm. Everybody's looking at themselves. That's my, old, that's my old joke. The best thing about L.A. is that you never have to worry what anybody thinks about you because everybody's thinking about themselves. I try to tell my <laughs> daughter that about like, you're so you're obsessed with, but who cares? And But it's hard not to care what, other, you know, especially coming in the performing arts. Yeah. Did your kids, um, yeah. did they act at all? My daughter is the more of a performer. She wasn't really, she tried soccer for like a month. Um, but no, she's got the performer gene. Like she's got it. She's got the stage presence. Um, but she just, she, she didn't, she needed discipline for a long time. Cause she would just kind of sit in the back and like have this scowl on her face during all of the, like singing and dancing. And she's back there with her resting, you know, what face. And I'm like, Felicity, you gotta like, Turn it on for the audience, you know? Um, So she's gotten better. Now she's in show choir. So that's her thing, uh, which is like a sport. Like you get athletic credit now for doing show choir in high school, which I did not know. Um, And so she started show choir, but uh, she loves it. What is show? I know choir and I know show. Show choir is like choir for Broadway musicals or something? It's like like dancing and singing. It's both. But there's equal importance on both. So they'll do like show tunes and sing and dance and do little like mini stories within the songs. Um, it's cute. It's fun. That's kind of interesting. It's like, you know, that, you know, it's like when I grew up, it was cheering was just cheering, but now cheering is like oh. the most incredible dangerous sport known to mankind where they're flipping oh. each other. Like oh, it's, it's, it's not, yeah. yeah. it's dangerous. Air gymnastics. We can say it. It's air gymnastics. It's now. Air gymnastics. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, but my kids so never, um, to answer your original question, or maybe you didn't ask this, um, I'll answer anyways. Um, did A lot of people ask me, did you ever want to get your kids into acting or did your kids ever ask to, if they could get into acting at Hollywood? And I was always like, well, 
until they express an interest, like, no, I'm not going to push that on them because that's a full-time job for the parent yeah. as well as the kid. Um, and I didn't want to like sign them up for it unless they were super into that. So my daughter did get curious at one point, um, when she was like, I don't know, 10 years old, maybe eight, nine, 10 around that age. Um, and so we had her as an extra on the show I was on. I'm not, I'm not mentioning names or details because as all of you know, screen actress yes. is on strike right now. So That's you know, I'm in solidarity with my union. So I'm not talking specifics about any of my past work. Um, but the show that I was on at the time, um, I said, come be an extra in, uh, be a background actor in one of these like kids scenes. And so she did, uh, she was only there for two days and she was like, this is hard work. Like it's a lot of sitting around and waiting and waiting and the lights are hot and you, I had to get up at five o'clock in the morning and then work all these hours. And I'm like, yeah, it's a job. It's not like we don't just, I don't just play. Like, it's not just playing things, you know, it's an actual, it's work. Um, so that kind of killed that dream. And she hasn't asked about acting ever since. So she actually, started. every kid should do that once. So they can see, instead of seeing the 18 seconds of glory on screen to go, it was like two straight days of horrifying <laughs> sitting around bored out of your mind. My daughter oh, yeah. did the same. She did one line on a show I worked on. Oh, no way. And, uh, That's great. But she did like one take and she's like, see you later. And started heading back to her trailer. <laughs> and the guy's like, where are you going? He goes, uh, she goes, what? I'm done. He goes, no, no, oh, no, no, no. First no, of all, no. we're going to do numerous takes. Yeah. Then we're going to move the camera. And we do more numerous. She was like, oh, God, single so cam. Yeah. She was like, Dad, I'm so confused. What's oh, yeah. happening? And it kind of kind of knocked it out of her as well. She's like, Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. Once it becomes not as fun anymore, they, they So they Rebecca, lose this their is a desire. great question because Rebecca says, My daughter oh. begs me to let her do YouTube videos. And honestly, she's kind of a natural, but I worry too much. And I tell her no. Uh -huh. Rebecca, a really good friend of mine, told his daughter no. And she was like, Okay, dad. And then three months later, his son came to him and said, hey, dad, I think I should tell you she's been posting YouTube videos. And she had put 60 videos up and she actually had a pretty good she was starting to grow. Wow. And he went to her and was like, hey, what are you doing? And he and he kind of explained to her. He went through her the parameters of who was uh -huh. following her. And she was like a 14 year old girl. And it was like 90 percent. 40 year old guys ew, were ew, watching her. Ew, he's like, Do you see who your fan base is? And yeah. I think she was like, But they're fan, you know, it's like you can't. <laughs> I'm not going to get the sponsorship deal without them, Dad. I mean, what do you think about kids doing? I mean, these kids, here's the problem some of them are making jillions of dollars on these yeah. things by like yeah. opening presents or playing a video game. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think. I think it depends on the age of the child. Um, I know there is that one boy. Ryan, who Ryan. presents all the time, but I think his parents are so heavily involved. Like he's not really reading he's comments or it's a like, meat he's... puppet for the parents. Right, right. right. The parents are like, do this. Yeah. yeah. So Did you not call the child a meat puppet. He's a meat. We're all like, <laughs> no, we're no, all no. actors are meat puppets. Please don't don't push it. Kate. Meat puppets. Not yeah. Meat, meat puppet. puppet reporting for duty here. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think it can inspire creativity. Like my daughter started doing like vlogs for like family vacations and stuff. Um. But I like she posted like two videos on YouTube and then gave up. So I was like, all right, I'm not worried about that. But I do worry because she was in my vlog. I did a vlog on YouTube um, back when I was working on a show. And so she was in my vlog, but she would read comments and stuff. And I think, you know, some of them are not so nice. And so I was like, yeah, I, I got to get my kids. Like then I became uncomfortable with putting my kids out there on my YouTube page. And I'm just like, how do I hide the comments from them? Or do I have to moderate them? Like, I don't know. That was a weird territory. And then I, I haven't vlogged in like two years. So that was my solution Ugh, was to give yeah. up. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of gray area. It's a hard question to it's answer. It's such a hard question because I did the same. And one, there was a comment. She, my daughter couldn't read them. She was so young, but somebody had said some unbelievable comment where I was like, wow, dude. And it broke my heart. Yeah. I was like destroyed. And then the same, but there, you can't stop them. So are we better off kind of maybe toughening them up when they're young so they don't read the comments and just go, I'm over it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. It's hard. They're, I think they're more vul emotionally vulnerable, like at those early, early teen yeah. years. And then they toughen up. At least my son, like he's 19 now. So I think a, a lot of stuff just rolls right off his back. Um, but in, you know, eighth, ninth, 10th grade, he was a lot more insecure than he is now. So I think it depends on the age too, about yeah. can they handle reading those types of comments? I agree. So. I always, I'm so curious, like, do your kids understand what you mean? Like, 
are you still like, will you go out with your kid? Like when they were even little and mm -hmm. you're getting spotted all the time and like, and that just becomes their normal. Like, do they understand the impact you sort of have had that there's this many people showing up from Brazil and Peru and like yeah. that, yeah. are you still super annoying and embarrassing to them? <laughs> that way, like, <laughs> it depends on the day. Yeah. Uh, it depends on if I'm, you know, it, giving them punishments or taking away their phone. Yes. Um, <laughs> but no, I think it's still kind of hitting that. Like it still hits them. Like they'll see something. I don't even know what, but just like, oh, wow, you have fans like in Australia. And I'm like, well, yeah, I've, we have fans all over the world and they're wonderful. Yes. So it's stuff like that. that they're, they're just like, wow, mom, you're a real celebrity. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm also your mom. So go clean your yes. room. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think they, sometimes they love it. Like if it gives them clout at school. Sure. Um, and they like the attention, you know, um, so sometimes it's great. I noticed freshman year of high school, suddenly they love the fact that I am on TV and they're just like, you know, telling their friends and their friends are so impressed. But yeah. before that, like middle school, they don't want to be seen with me. Like they have well, actively run out of a Starbucks <laughs> yeah. and I get recognized by their that's peers. Funny. It's embarrassing at that age. So, yeah, you know, I just, I, I just, just ride the wave. If you, were, if you were maybe immune to what the rest of us go through, which is that the children just despise our very presence. Oh, anywhere I am near them. right there with you. Yeah. I am not <laughs> immune. No, actually being on TV makes it worse. Cause then they're just like so embarrassed. So they're nice. like, mom, why did you wear those clothes? And why did you, you know, <laughs> it's embarrassed by, you know, they're embarrassed by me where, you know, regardless of the type of characters I played, but Oh, my wow. kids are always just embarrassed about me in general, pretty much. Yeah. Um, hey, I don't know if you've had pets, but Jason had a very interesting uh, a pet situation this week. So um, we had a cat who had a heart condition. And unfortunately, oh. at just four years old, he passed away this this oh. last week. Oh, no. And this was set our, up with a different tone. Yeah, this is not, that was not a good setup. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, can it's, we get it's, a second take on this? Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> so he is a wonderful cat. It's, it's alive and it's real. Everyone's enjoying oh, it. It's oh, great. Oh, I it's, where the story it's taking goes. a very long nap right oh. now. And he has... It's just a nap. It's gonna. He's okay. He's up in his farm in upstate New York. He's gonna be okay. Oh, um, oh wait. Then there's a cat in the background. What is he's happening? Fine. That's he's crazy. Back. That cat heard you talking about the other cat and showed up. So jealous. That's his brother. Oh, yeah. oh so no. he's in grief. Look, get, get him on the live cast here. He is. We've been. Well, this better. is Buzz. He. We've been. Uh, we've been giving him. He's been, had a. We had a memorial wake today for him. It was an all tuna buffet. Uh, oh. He seemed to really enjoy himself. Uh, oh. But my son, who is seven, has never dealt with grief before, oh, and wow. so it was oh. a a very intense few days where he yeah. was just absolutely unconsolable. And I heard him in uh, in our our hallway talking to the cat and telling him how sorry he was to the cat that he's like, I'm so sorry that your brother left us. And I, oh. he's, he's just gone way too soon. And I don't, oh. I don't know if you've, you've talked to your mom at all, but, and then we have no idea who the mom even is. Yeah, he's like, no. but if you want to let her know, I mean, I'll take you over there. I was like, first of all, you're seven, you can't drive, but uh, I mean, we'll do our best to let the rest of the family know, but have you, have you, how did you, have you ever had grief to deal with, with your children and how did you deal with it? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, yes. Well, my mother passed away two years, two and a half years ago. So that's pretty recent. I mean, that's still pretty recent grief. Um, and before that, um, I lost my grandparents. So that, you know, that was, we've worked our way up on the grief, grief ladder. Like first it's, you know, the grandparent that they didn't see very often. And so they're like, oh yeah, that's, that's sad. And then it's like the grandparent that they like a little bit more, you know? So, um, yeah. the stage is great, but losing my mom was hard because she was so involved in my kid's life. Um, and she passed away during like the COVID, the COVID period, uh -huh. not like those immediate lockdowns, but, uh, yeah. it was early 2021. So like, I hadn't seen her in person in a long time. Um, and same with my kids, like that we, we weren't allowed to see each other cause she's high, she was high risk and her, yeah. um, residential place was on, like on, they were on lockdown too. So anyways, that, let me not get off on a grief tangent here, but, um, well, they anyway, basically just, begged you to go off on that tangent. Just they have set you up for that. I mean, he they did. Said, Jason yes. went straight to grief. I was going more like I have a I have an older puggle. I have a like almost 19 year old puggle. Oh, and oh. my kids are already uh, he you can't really play with him. He just yeah. he can't see or hear. We feed him. He's like he walks around. He's like, what's happening? He's waiting to say goodbye, but he's too strong. Oh, and so oh. the kids have already like uh, they've already been like, hey, when he dies, can we get another dog? Like they're already. 
They've already checked they're, they're it out. They've moved, moved on. on, and he's they've not gone on. yet. So that's when Jason's Aww. like, his cat passed. I was like, oh, my kids would be like, oh, thank when's, God. Yeah, when can we cat. go to the store or the pound? And Jason yeah. took it to grandparents and other types of. Uh, well, I just want to say, Andrea, I'm I'm really sorry for the loss of your mother because. Oh, it's, thanks. I didn't just, mean to bring it the room. No, down no, here. no. But I mean, that's it's, <laughs> it's not a swear. That's this is a real thing. People, yeah. People in the well, chat deal with this. It is I've, a parenting yeah. thing because we yeah. had the same. We had my my wife lost her mother very young in the same mm. way we couldn't see her forever and oh. we had to have that that was honestly the hardest conversation i've ever had i sat, we sat so down hard. with my kids she was like eight and six at the time sat on the front steps and we had a conversation and everyone was like oh and that's when yeah. once that's when parenting is really like because it's almost more painful through your kids everything is i just always say kids are kind of extensions of my nervous system right now yeah. when if my kid gets if she hurts i hurt i can't stop i'm like oh so yeah, yeah. I had my um we we lived next to next door to a woman who my son who was two and a half at the time when I moved into our place she was 104 the woman next door and wow. she always would give him popsicles her name was Miss Grace mm -hmm. and I the first person I had to explain to him had passed I said like you know um, Miss Grace you know she died she's mm -hmm. um, she's not here anymore and he was like did she go to heaven and I was just like oh I'm gonna be honest because I just don't I was like I don't know oh wow <laughs> like, okay yeah like, I don't that's know. honest I hope so yeah. I don't I mean, know she might have killed a couple people back in her early <laughs> 20s oh years. well and that took a turn wow and then okay. you this don't is know going, I mean, parents I mean, is going like dark that. maybe tonight. she yeah say it Andrew, you say it tonight like it's not like every, this is not, I mean it's, it's, it's not a weekly occurrence okay parenthood has, there's dark undertones to all the joy and flowers and birthday cakes. It's, you yeah. know, it's, it's, well, it's there is, but what I was going to say is that my son then, I said, you know what? Because her, her sons are going to go visit because, um, you know, we knew the family and mm. she lived by herself at 104. So like wow. we were always over, like I would make dinner and then I'd bring her the leftovers and like she didn't have yeah. her air conditioning working. I'm like, it's 102 here. How is this? She's gonna, like, but when she finally did pass, I said to my son, I'm like, we'll go bring her. We're going to go put some flowers on the front porch. Mm. And then he said, oh, and I can make a picture. And then when, when Miss Grace gets back, she can see it. And the thought, oh. the way oh. I had to explain like, oh, no. Yeah. Like, it still makes me so like okay. oh, they're not coming back. I think we've all shared enough grief stricken stories in this. Yeah, I just it's, party it's this hard. Again. It's hard. No matter how it happens, it's hard. And I just think kids, kids concept of permanence is very is a very tough thing to navigate. Mm -hmm. My is, concept of permanence is yeah. Very, I mean, nobody's good at it, right? I've yeah. never gotten a tattoo because I'm like, I honestly don't know how I'm gonna feel tomorrow. I don't I don't yeah. like I don't that's why marriage sometimes I'm like <laughs> this is this we're doing this forever i don't know yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know how any marriage survives to be honest with you. i think we can all agree on that all right so you have two children yes. um a lot of people most people would say oh i don't have a favorite child but truth mm. be told 65 percent of people have a favorite child that they but i i do for sure we absolutely do I okay for sure do but it I changes believe. it changes according it changes. to the season or yes. the month you know, I have a least favorite child, but the other two I try to keep pretty even. <laughs> but now they're saying it. that there's a uh, you, kids can get PDT. It's a parental differential treatment, oh. and it affects them in later life. Like this is just one more thing for the kids to, to sue Great. years later. Yeah. Like there's a lawsuit, probably some kid going, "I wasn't the favorite, and I, I it hurt me, and I want money." Wow, wow. Know. Yeah. No, I think there's nothing wrong with having. There's nothing wrong with having favorites. It's, I mean, to me, my fa the favorite kid is the one who's respecting me and hearing me and treating me with respect. You know, so with, with teenagers, that's rare. So, like, you know, the fact that my 19 year old's starting to, he's starting to crest that mountain of awfulness. Like, he's right there and he's like <laughs> starting to like, I hear you, mom. I understand you. Let's talk it out. You know, I'm like, wow, this is great. And then I have the 16 year old that just slams the door and yells, and I'm like, okay, well, she'll get there. Sure. Yeah, one, of, one of your fans, Colleen Daniels, says, oh, my God, I so have a favorite child. It's my puppy because my human spawn is too needy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So your son was he it. was a troublesome teen, which is weird. I have two girls and everyone <laughs> tells me they say oh, the teen years are brutal for brutal. girls. But I know. I, yeah. Was it worse for your boy? Um. Well, I'm still right in the thick of it with my girl. I think it started earlier with my boy, like 13. And with my girl, it's like more recent, like 15, 16. Um, so, and I don't know, I'm not on the other side yet with either of them, but definitely not my 16 year old. So um, I don't know. It's just, they're different kids. So it's different 
challenges. They handle arguments differently. Um, like with my daughter, it's more of like the social, social pressure, social stress, you know, fighting with girlfriends. And my son never had fights with friends. Like it was all like different types of drama. Um, but not like there were boys don't fight. Like at least my kid, I mean, I hate to like assign gender stereotypes here, but boys are just like, you know, they punch true. each other and they're over it. You know, my and wife and I talk about it all the time. Hang She's... on to their, their issues and their resentment for years. But don't like, you think years. that works forever? Because yes. we sit there and all the moms at my kid's school, my wife will be like, ugh, there's drama again. And I go, that's something you'll never hear from one of the dads at school. You should, oh, the dads. A lot of drama between oh. the dads. There's none. 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 No drama. No drama. Kind of refreshing. I want yeah. I want to yeah. adopt I that. It's funny you said that about you don't want to gender it, but it is interesting. Like even today, there was a, a mom was talking to me about how like the, the girls, like some of the girls had to be separated this year in different classes because they all have fights. And I was like, uh -huh. is it? Like it's, I was like, do boys not fight? And it just, because I have two sons, but, and it just does seem like the tensions are so high. And I think it's yeah. what part of what I feel like happens is that we sort of get set up as each, or for whatever reason, we see each other as our competition. Mm. Like when we hit a certain age and I don't know, like, I, I guess, I don't know. I've never been a guy, but is that, does that competition exist for guys too? Like. No, and it, it, no. at auditions, so. guys check out the girls, and girls check out the other girls. The girls, oh, yeah. Oh, right. interesting. So it's always, yeah, I totally agree with that, Kate. I think that is, and not to gender stereotype. Whatsoever. I know, like, like and I know, yeah. obviously, everybody's different, and mm -hmm. of course there can be, but it does seem to me that, like, there's a thing that, because I, I definitely was that way. And also, I will tell you, I very, this is like such a horrible thing to admit to a live audience, but I didn't want girls because I was like, I remember what I was like. Oh, and I remember yeah. my only job from the ages of 12 until 18 were to hate my mother. And I just uh -huh. can't, I don't have the confidence for that for someone to hate me. So really yeah. quick, Jade Daniels says, wait, I'm confused. Can she see our comments? Hi, Jade. I can. She, she can, Jade. I but can, but there's a lot of them. There's a, there's lot. a lot of them. And I can't multi task so i see some and, and if you're highlighted through, I, we're I can trying see to the ones read that are highlighted. as many as we can if you have a question definitely pop it up and we'll try well to but we also it. can't talk about specific struck shows right? yeah so i'm yeah. i'm 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 editing as i go okay yeah. okay yeah, yeah, yeah great yeah i'm a, i'm happy to answer any question that's not i'm actually so curious the shows that, I was on. <laughs> that you know you you were you were on a, a show that i won't mention but mm -hmm. as a child and then at some point that ends. And I just, I call it like the day after the wedding, right? Mm -hmm. Like you've been doing this thing for so long and then like the, and then you have the wedding and then like there's the day after the wedding where you're like, what now? Like, yeah. was there a bit of depression for you after, or is there still when a big project ends and like this family that you've built sort of disperses? Absolutely. Yes. I, I do. I do feel that um, after any time a project or a show and, but I was lucky um, when the show ended when I was 18, I was so ready to move into college. Like I was already enrolled at, in, at Whittier College and I was taking wow. like part-time class. So I was doing like two classes um, because I couldn't be there all the time. But once the show wrapped, I moved into the dorms. I was just like fully, I was like, this is a great distraction from any emotional stuff that I need to, I'm just going to shelve it for four years and go to college. And it was great. And I got to know so much about myself and learn about different interests that weren't acting related. Um, mm -hmm. I went, lived abroad um, a couple of times actually, and learned a lot about myself again and about the country we live in and how it's viewed by other countries. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was, it was such a great time that I didn't. So in that time period between like 18 and 22, it was great. But then you graduate from college and it's that same, oh crap moment where you're just like, what do I do now? And for so long, school had provided that structure that I needed mm. and that daily motivation. But once I graduated from college, I was like, uh, uh, I'm going to go to graduate school now. And so I did. <laughs> like I just keep pushing it off, um, until I had kids. And then I, I worked for a year and then I was just like, you know what? I, I just, I want to be at home with my kids and, and have the experience of just being a mom and not, Yes. Working like I had worked since I was five years old. Right. And so I was just like, you know what? I'm going to not work for the first time in my life and just spend as much time as I can with my kids when they're little. 
which I cherish those memories now, now that yes. I'm like, ah, go away, you teenagers. You know, now I'm just like, oh, I miss when you were little. And we would but have you must have had days. It could, well, actually, that brings up another topic we were going to talk about. Oh, the wow. fact that uh, there was a poll. What do you think the hardest age to parent is? Hmm. My answer is whatever age my kids are. <laughs> right, right. That's that's, the, that's the answer. Exactly actually. the answer. Fine. I mean, I haven't <laughs> walked away yet, so I don't know if I've hit it. <laughs> well, and I don't want to scare you guys, but my answer to that question, the it's hardest so age is 19 and 16. Is 18. No, it's 18. <sighs> it's the fresh baby adults that have they're freshly legally adults and so they have the hubris and the con overconfidence of, of an adult, but then they still like need help with everything. So it's like, and then I, you know, they don't want to listen to your because you're my, you're, you're my, you're not my parent. Well, I am your parent, but you're an adult now. <laughs> I don't have to listen to you. I'm an adult. I'm like, well, you, but you live here, and you I know, just did I your provided laundry. you with a car. <laughs> so yeah, so it's like you, yeah. So anyway, so I would say 18, and that's been a learning curve. 19 has been better than 18. Uh -huh. We've we're learning to cohabitate and um respect each other's boundaries still living at home still living at home yeah he's yeah. going to the local jc that's and taking great. classes there and he works uh part-time as a server at an italian restaurant oh, wow. and uh, he's doing great i'm like those are the two rules be in school or be in yeah. school and have a part-time job or work full-time and you then know, the you can whole, live here the community college thing is genius I, i'm so amazed that kids nowadays unless you're going for something very specific that you have to go to like a four-year but you can save so much money yeah. by going to like, and you get, you pump your grades up a little bit. And then yeah. I know so many people who got, went to Santa Monica community college and then transferred to like SC or whatever, and only paid for their it's last great two plan. years. Same it's degree. It's a great I plan. Know, I know. And then you have time to make mistakes too. Like I didn't know who I was at 18. You know, it's, you learn so much about yourself. You can change majors, change everything, change yeah. court, your course. And um, yeah, by the time you get into the, the big league schools, you're, you have a better direction, a sense of direction. Yeah. Well, and it's funny too, especially in California, or at least in our in the LA area of California. Um, I have friends who are like college counselors who have said that the UC schools are actually so it's impossible to get into, and just across the nation, apparently, the college like process is very different than when we were going through college like you apply now to like 30 it's like a it becomes people's full-time job it just seems to me like it's just a very different situation and we yeah. have these friends who are college counselors who said the best thing you can do is go to a junior college for uh. two years and then there because there's tons of spots for transfers in at junior year right. there's yeah. not enough spots for freshmen to come in so it's like such a great tip that i never would have <laughs> considered mm -hmm. i love we're that gonna we're going to let my kid, uh, she's going to disown us as parents. So what's it called when they, they, um, Oh, emancipated. They, emancipated. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to have just before my daughter goes to college, we're going to have her emancipate herself oh, from nice. us so that she has no income whatsoever. Yeah. Just before freshman year. And that way she'll get full financial aid. She'll get oh, a full. Nice. Oh, oh nice. Great. There. Oh, that's yeah. forward thinking right there. Wow. Honestly, I also yeah. thought about just having like some homeless guy adopt her and then mm -hmm. still no income. Um, her address would go. be full under ride the bridge, under the bridge, full ride. Just it's all about yeah. money at this point. It's about working the rules in your favor. There you go. There uh, speaking you go. Of, it's back to school. Um, by the way, the, mm -hmm. they said the age was eight in the poll, which yeah, is crazy. The hardest age is eight. Oh, my daughter's I, eight. No, I disagree. And my daughter, this is the greatest year ever. She's still yes. sweet. She helps. I thought mm -hmm. three. They say it's terrible twos, but I think it's because it doesn't rhyme. Three with is three. hard for me. Three. I thought three was absolutely brutal, but. I'm yeah. going to have two teenage girls in a couple of years and it's going to be uh, mm. karma. The karma police are going to show I, up. I also feel Jamie like is on Beckying the system. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No comment. No, no comment. But, uh, but Becky. Oh, no, um, we should have put that one up. Oh, it's, Lord. It's fine. I think we're I actually I, didn't I mean love for, I, I love they're her, happening yeah, so fast okay. that I clicked the wrong. It, it, they're, they're so quick with the comments. I accidentally oh. clicked some that I shouldn't. Um, I, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say, um, uh, well, now I lost it. I don't know. That's okay. I like. Oh, I think, I also think like what's hard for us is what our skill set is. I, I did not, I know so many women who loved the newborn phase and I was mm. like, this thing can't laugh at me yet. Like, oh. I have no, you, like this thing does not interact with me. I really found the new or, newborn, like if you asked me like, what's the hardest stage? I'm like, it's a newborn. Oh, I thought but there are so many women who are like, you're insane. It's the best time. They're so, I'm like, no, no. Oh, I, it depends on the type of baby you have. If you've got a colicky, yes. yeah. needy baby, that's, that's, it's so hard. But yeah, if you have an easygoing I, baby that sleeps, 
they yeah. still 16 yeah. hours a day is fantastic yeah, yeah. For us, new, the newborns were like very loud plants they were just like like you just loud were trying plants. to keep it very loud <laughs> diapers house plants just like I mean, it's that terror of when you, you you're like, is she is she breathing? And then you go and you go to listen, and you wake her up, and then she starts, and you're like, God. And then it takes yeah. that first year to let that go. Where you're like, look, yes. if she's not breathing, I, there's nothing I can do. But I'm not waking that kid up right now. I, I yeah. lose my mind. Yeah. And the diaper. Don't wake again. the baby. Don't wake the baby. Don't wake the baby. Um, ever. Ever. Yes, Jade. Ever. We can still see your comments. Hi, Jade. Yeah. She. <laughs> Jade's like, I can't believe they said my name. Hi, Jade. Yeah. <laughs> J J J J J J. Boy, Colleen, you are correct. My twins are are Mandrake. vicious feral raccoons. <laughs> um, mandrakes are the screaming plants from Harry from Potter. Harry Potter. Yeah. Oh, sorry, the oh, yeah. books, the books, not the movie. There's just the oh, books. Yeah. Just the books. No, they're in the movies. Stop, Jason. He can say it. Embargo, embargo. <laughs> I'm bound by nothing. Well, we can talk about work that it's not like we didn't do the Harry Potter movies. That's yeah, so you were. You we can were talk not... about the Harry Potter. I wasn't in them, so I could talk about those. Surprise! I was in them. I'm Rupert I Grint. Love it. We love can. It. Uh, so you were a you're a Pelotoner. I noticed on your Instagram. Are you? Um, are oh, you did a... I put that? Yeah. Is that in my bio? Um, my Peloton. That's my only form of exercise <laughs> <laughs> lately. In our 95 degree heat we're having in uh, Los Angeles. Um, yeah, I love my Peloton. I got it right at the start of the pandemic. Like not, not even because of the, the pandemic. stock went through the roof. Oh, and yeah. And it all. Fantastic. Like, yes. um, so that was my lifeline during the, the 2020 year. Did your, your year. son missed? Did your son miss his senior year? No, he got so lucky. He he graduated in uh, 22, 20, 2022. Okay. So it was right when everything came, like he had the prom, he had graduation, like he had everything. Whereas I think it was the year before him where it was like some stuff. And the year before that, that's when they, yeah. like my nephew was the 2020 year. And so he didn't have a graduation. He didn't have a prom. Like it was awful. And then he enrolled in college and couldn't go to class. Like he was doing zoom for two yeah. years. And I'm like, I do yeah, think the whole yeah, generation is going to so be much. scarred. Uh, yeah. Scarred that's what my therapist stuff. says. Yeah. yeah. So it's we, gonna, we, our twins were, you know, they were born in 2019 and literally they, you know, they, sh everything shut down right after their first birthday. And so oh. we are finding the developmental issues, especially with like, so that with everybody's mouths covered with the masks, there has been, an, uh, we were told by our speech therapist that, that they are seeing such an uptick in kids being so far behind that some wow. states are even changing the metrics that they're being measured at because they are no longer the same. Wow. Wow. I, wow. I'm not surprised though. You know, that was a life changing no. thing. And when you're in your formative day. years, yeah, that's, that's huge. Well, at least when it happens again in a couple of years, we'll be more prepared for it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Baby I, stars pandemic. Are you, are you guys also <laughs> actors or just Andrea? I just play an actor on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, Jamie um, and I have, uh, we're, Jamie and I are also uh, members of Screen Actors. Though. We have parts. And I came from paranormal reality television. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. he is on he's strike from the ghosts. Yeah. So he's on strike I from actually, the ghosts. You know what stinks? Okay. I have a show on tonight and I can't, uh, uh, I can't talk about it. Uh, well, that's okay. But yeah. it's, uh, I mean, if you ever went to a city in Washington and you, Went to their fire department. Uh, Taylor, is, oh. is that too much to, to go too, too no. far? Nobody. I have knows. no idea what you're talking no, about. No, she and I'm not she going to know. go to my streamer she after this. Would look not, you no, what's no, I am not going to do that. Ever. It is back to school, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. Can Ugh, we talk about prep? Week. My wife just sent me the list. Um, oh man, you are in the thick of it. Elementary yeah. school. My mm. condolences. This part gets easier as they get older. In it's high school, they don't have a list anymore. Oh my gosh. Uh, two pencil supply boxes, clear type 12 inch ruler, endless supply of pencils, endless supply of blue pens, box of crayons, 16 count journal, colored pencils, markers okay. for coloring, glue stick, black sharky, permanent marker. Why would you give a kid a permanent marker? One well, highlighter, one idea. black dry erase mm -hmm. marker, old sock to be used as an eraser, small scissors, loose leaf notebook paper, mm -hmm. uh, 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 baby wipes, it goes on. I can't well, and a lot of those are classroom donations, right? It's not like your kid is going to be housing all of that stuff in. No, in we desk. all chip in. I guess people send it in. We're at oh, a little, okay. little. Because I was going to say, yeah. you also could look into public school, in which case we don't have a supply list. 
We just oh, is have. that why? Is it because we donating to God because we're a Catholic school? I think I think private schools. I think whatever for whatever reason, at least the California public schools get okay. a certain stipend for supplies, and then like the teachers will be like, we don't have Kleenex or Lysol wipes, and then we'll all bring in like Kleenex and Lysol wipes. But we don't. So have God, to God knows everything, and He's everywhere, but He yeah. He needs pencils. Is what he you're doesn't telling. know how to get some he pencils. pencils. He doesn't know how you to get. Know how much writing He's doing up there? Can we give, give the man he's the taking break. notes? Yeah. Also, he's like, don't forget the glue sticks. I need glue sticks. That's the key and thing, an old yeah. sock to erase with. Yeah. Um, there was a big, I, I read this thing about going back to school that people keep posting um, back to school with the actual school that their kids are going to. No, don't do and that. And the police people. are coming out going, hey, ding dongs, you ding don't, dongs. don't do that. Don't like do I that. always try to, even if it's in there, I like I squiggle it out and get rid of the school that's in the post and stuff because otherwise i saw one of the police yeah. officers posted that you shouldn't be posting your child's social security number on those things I'm like what, what? Was he doing like what? why did that what? even need to be addressed like oh i was like what kind of rule is that I can somebody put that. social on there yeah they were the one well, that the article there that, that you're talking about had that they have the police officer showing the kinds of acceptable ones and then like and what you they should and can have on them and then like the other one was like you shouldn't be posting your child's social security number and i was like okay well now i know i'm so now sorry I, I did that previously wow. so okay. let me get i'm going to take the bank account information off of that. right you better take work, yeah whatsoever home address that's not yeah that's blood not type great. get that all yeah can't post that yep. blood, blood type <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, i always feel like parents always say like oh it goes so fast it goes so fast and my experience of that first year was there's it's i was surprised because everybody had told me how fast it was going to go. And I was like, no, no, I'm surprised the child's not seven. Like, I cannot believe my baby's only turning yeah. one. No, it's like snail like, speed, those snail early speed, years. Guess, like, do you feel like looking back on, you have a 16-year-old and a 19-year-old. Yeah. Was it fast? Or um, No, it was painfully slow. <laughs> it, I mean, especially when, it's true, especially before they get to school and you're like, oh my God, I have to entertain these these things. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's why it's like, oh my God, how many play dates or gymboree dates or, you know, like yes. I, we, there was not enough stuff that we could find. Uh, I guess a little better <laughs> when they go to Jen, preschool. Jen 28 goes, how dumb can you be posting? Your hey, Jen, come on, people. Well, come on, Jen. People aren't that smart. Please, man, Jen. Be, be cool. You know, that's okay. Um, <laughs> but it was slow for you. Oh, yeah. So it was, yeah, it's mind numbingly slow when they're infants. Um, and it does get better when they go to preschool. And then by the time they're in elementary school, that's when it speeds up because then yes. you don't see them for six hours a day. Yes. And then when you do see them, you're driving them to sports and their ballets or their performances or whatever. Yes. So that's yes. when time speeds up. And now I'm just like, how do I have a baby adult now? Like that's, you know, so and cher cherish every year. I'm trying to cherish even these teenage years because I'm like, I know I'll miss them when they move out. I will miss all the like the dirty dishes and the you know leaving the lights on and all the loud slamming of the doors. I'm gonna miss that. You will. I, I, I that's what I tell myself to get through each day. I'm going to miss this someday, um, but the, wow. I, I'm not there yet. That's not today. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. that's crazy. Yeah, uh, I, I, I also, just oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say I also have found that like. People are like, oh, I just miss babies. I miss, and again, obviously, I'm just unpacking my own trauma from them right. being babies. But no, I would, I like, I also feel like, oh, I actually don't like, I love my kids. There's that song, I love you more today than yesterday. It's so true for kids. Like, I just feel like I love, like, I don't actually want my two year old back because then does that mean I wouldn't have my eight year old? Like, I just love oh. them every, like, I love them. And I'm sure I am heading to a point where I'll be like, nope, nope. I miss the two-year-old <laughs> because, yeah. because the 18 year old is a nightmare or this 15, whatever it is. But I just still feel like I'm in such sweet age. I, they're eight and five. I'm like, I'm I love saying eight and 10. If I could keep them here, like yeah. this, oh, they still come up and they go, time. I love you, daddy. And, oh, like, oh, oh. and then they still don't clean their room, but it's, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> that tracks. I do. Do you notice this Andrea that like, like when I, before I had kids, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was aging. Like every year was the same. I was single oh, right. or whatever. But all of a sudden now, like my daughter just turned 10 last week and I was like, wow, oh. that, was, that was a decade. That's, I'm a decade. You're a decade older. A yeah. Decade older than, than that. I just feel like they make you, they make me feel like I'm aging more than before I had kids. Well, because it's a barometer. It's like a visual barometer of time because they're getting taller and they're getting smarter and they, you know, then they start to argue with you and negotiate and, 
you know, they actually have good points at times and you're like, ah, you know, this is much easier when they were three. Uh, but yeah, no, I definitely feel they a they age you too. Like I have, like I'm 47, but in mom years, I'm like 88 because I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, whew, I've lost, I've lost sleep. I've lost years off my life. I've, they've caused me stress. I've got knots named after them on my neck. Um, so yeah, they, they age you, you know, that's it's true. Jeff asks, what's your thoughts on birth order traits? Ooh, mm. this is good. This is I don't hilarious. even know what that means. What's a like, birth so order? So are you the firstborn? Are you the middle child in your growing up? Or oh, are you the, the baby? I'm the same I as you. Baby. I'm youngest of six. I'm a baby. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm yeah. the youngest of three, but the only girl. Oh. Kate? Which is Which does change things. I'm the youngest of two. Okay. But, so I don't, yeah, I mean. I'm the oldest of two. Okay. Okay. I do have four older sisters though, so I was kind of a little mama's wow. boy at home. And, uh... and Jamie, you were also like, you were like, I always, whenever there's six kids, I'm like, well, either the first or the last was a mistake. You were really the whoops, right? I was. Ooh. Um, I always say I'm a I'm a single child of six because an only child of six because yes. the closest one to me is eight years older than me. There were five kids, Irish Catholics, and then eight years later, I came along, and uh, and my parents were go. like, they were older, and my dad was like, oh my god, what have we done? And then that poor guy got tormented. And now the karma police are paying me back for how I tortured that poor guy. <laughs> so, yeah, I well, think yeah. I think the a lot of times the the most spoiled, the favorite is the youngest. Mm -hmm. Oh, for, yes. my brothers would agree with that. Yeah. A my, thousand my percent. Yeah. Yeah. Being the only girl and the youngest and I'm five years younger than my the next oh, brother. Wow. OK, that's a big um, jump. so. Uh, yeah. So they were off on co in college when I was in high school. Um, but I do think there's, a, there's, there's something to be said for birth order because like as the youngest, I'm more of a follower. I'm not a leader. I'm not like a take charge person. I'm just kind of like, okay, let's, uh, you know, how can I please everyone and keep everyone happy and all together and nurture everyone. Whereas my oldest brother, he's, yeah, he's very much in charge. He's like the guy that's going to get stuff done and make sure everybody's okay. And, um, so yeah, I feel like firstborns are leaders and lastborns are followers and people pleasers. I don't know. That, at least in my family and my kids that are kind of the lot same of sense. way. I've never heard that put that way before, but yeah, that makes a lot of sense because you kind of, you know, you're somebody already blazed the trail for you yeah. and you kind of just yes. rode along it. But yeah, that's interesting. I, I also feel like it's, that. there's gotta be something to it because anybody who, who first kid out of the gate doesn't make any mistakes. It's yeah. like, They're or the doesn't pancake. Do it. like, I don't know. I the feel like pancake. The way the way we documented, <laughs> throw it out and get another one. Yeah. <laughs> the mistake, the mistake, pink. Yeah. Oh, better luck. Well, it is true because you 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 it, you make all your mistakes on the you know it's the first yeah. try. It's the first you're learning. Yeah, yeah, you're learning yes. as a parent, and uh, the kids don't understand that. But you're like, oops, I messed that one up. I remember yeah. I dropped her one time. I think I was trying to take a picture or something. Oh, I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess that was not going to college. I don't know. Oh, man. And, uh, my wife was like, what the fuck? Ah! lost my mind. <laughs> my <laughs> husband's the youngest of four, and they the family took all of the pictures um, and put them on a DVD for them to watch, you know, like compiled them all. Aww. And it's like 12 minutes of the oldest daughter. It's like a solid five of the next brother. It's a couple pictures of like the 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 third. And then there's just a picture of a kid riding by on a bike and that's my husband. <laughs> like youngest of four. <laughs> Andrea, will it. you give will you give Ashley a shout out please? Oh yeah. Hi Ashley Thomas. Thanks for your kind <laughs> comments. I saw your She's like, oh yeah. Yeah there was another one earlier but I'm I can't I don't want to interrupt my no, you can wonderful interrupt. It's your, it's your here, show. So. Do only children get all our mistakes? And if, oh, Carrie. Uh, yeah. Hi, Carrie. I know her, too. Um, yeah. Do only my, children get all our mistakes? Yeah, well. My daughter's friend's maybe. an only child, and she's very quiet. There's no um, – my. I have two little girls, and they're 18 months apart, and they – whether they're playing or whatever, they are, like, loud and killing each other. And I do think only childs are, I don't know, more, more reserved, more quiet, maybe. Is that wrong? See, with see twins, that. like, it got yeah. split right down the mid. Like, like our Logan is a, a carbon copy of his mother. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. the other one is a carbon copy of his father. Mm -hmm. And there's a darkness there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, Andrea, before I let you go, I want to do a, um, a little quiz. Oh, I um, love quizzes. And we won't talk mm -hmm. about the specific dad from your show. Okay. Who's one of the 
TV's greatest dads and one of my fave comics of all time, Mr. Well, Bob we can Saget. talk. Well, we can talk about him. Yeah, I loved him. But here's the quiz. Bob. Bob's That's, the best. Bob is and not that, struck work, so we can talk about. No, Bob, Bob is not struck work. And and uh, <laughs> no, he wants just, people to keep talking about. It. He's up there right now. He's, he's like, up right, there laughing his ass off. Uh, he, yeah, bring I, me up. <laughs> I did stand me. up with him a bunch, and it's funny how yeah. filthy on stage he was, considering oh, yeah. what, how he was on that show. Like he did, he did a set, and I was like, oh my god. That was oh, yeah. rolling like, laughing. Wait, that's Bob Saget? Yeah, it it's so shocking. He was that the shock best. factor. And he's arguably one of the greatest dads uh, that's ever been on television. But I yes. had made a cup because I kept laughing that I got, uh, I kept getting, you know, cups that said world's greatest dad. So we made a cup uh, at, that was Aww. the world. So it was you're the oh. world's sixth greatest dad. Sixth. <laughs> and then the list was this. So the yes. list was one, Ward Aww. Cleaver, two, mm -hmm. Howard Cunningham, three, uh -huh. Mike Brady, pretty mm -hmm. much. Phil Dunphy from Good one. Fam yeah, family modern, family. Yeah. modern, modern family. family. Modern Family. And Carl Winslow is Yeah. Family Matters. Family yeah, that's matters. Family Matters. Then you, you're number six. And then it starts to get south. It goes Archie Bunker, Al Bundy, oh. Walter White from Breaking. I don't know. Why oh, Walter White. I don't know if I And then Tony I mean, Soprano was number ten because he killed people as well. Wow. Um, yes. who what, are, a, what a list. Who were some yeah. of the shows that you I guess can we talk about the greatest um parents on TV? Yeah, as long as as long as we don't talk about our own shows, that's right. I think that's right. we're fine. My friend, his, we're not uh, having a show. <laughs> he married Marion Ross's daughter. Who oh is, no way! She's the mom from Happy, Happy Days. Days, right? And so his kids, their grandmother, is is uh, Marion from, from No Happy way! Days, she which seems is like really she'd be such a great grandma too. <laughs> yeah. She's got good grandma energy. <laughs> She's pretty crazy, uh, but yes, yes, yes. But it's so funny to to see, like, you know, when you get when you like when you're that iconic as a as a TV parent. Yeah. You know, you're living in this crazy under the glass, like Bob. Like Bob was this crazy. He was, he was America's like, dad. Amer yeah. He was really America's dad, and then to be to go back to your real life to live like that. Yeah. Who were some of the people that you you kind of thought of as as parents, TV parents back in the day? Oh gosh. Um. I'm trying to remember what shows I watched. Like, bro, I didn't watch a lot watch of TV growing like as a child yeah. actor, you're on TV, so you don't I was like say, I worked on Friday TV. nights, so I didn't watch the you know, That's any true. of the, the Friday night was shoot night. Nights. Yeah. So I didn't grow up watching any of those shows. What were but, some of the um, lessons you got from your parents? Um, we always ask that about like some of the best people will always go. My dad always said this. Like I think my kids are always gonna say, my father would say, because I always say, focus on the task at hand. Oh, that's good. And then move to the next one. It's some some Navy garbage from back in my Navy days. But um, were the things that your parents always said to you that you can remember? Um, yeah, my I mean, my parents are so great. Um, you know what? Okay, this seems weird, but I'm gonna say it anyways. But one of the best things, and I use this every day still, that my mom taught me was Ohio, only handle it once. So oh, okay. if you walk in and you take off your coat, don't just throw it on the floor because then you're going to have to pick it up and then you're going to put it on the couch and then you have to pick it up off the couch and then you have to. So it's like, no, take off the couch, take off your coat and either put it in the laundry or hang it up. And then you only handle it once and you don't handle it another 10 times trying to get, hide it or clean up. So Ohio. Yeah. Oh, that's one of the uh, handful it's of skills. It's kind of mind blowing, right? For super it's successful really people. <laughs> But also, it can also be with like relationships too. Like with oh. it, like you get in a fight, let's not go back. Let's not go through yeah. this again. Handle Don't rehash. It handle it now and yes. then put it Only to sleep. Only handle it once. Oh yeah, my Ohio. god. Ohio. For me, I applied it to bills. I always apply it to bills. I'll sit there, I'll have a stack of bills. Oh, and sometimes yes. you pick up the bill and you Don't go, wait. I'll take care of this later. And you're like, just and do it, it now. Yep. I tell my kids yep. that all the time. I go, if you just got ready, then sat down to watch TV. That yes. would be fine, but you sit yes. down and watch TV, and then I go, "We got to go," and you go, "I'm not ready." You go, "Dude, they yeah. just..." Can't. I use well, I use that advice. advice with my first marriage. I just handled it the one time. Oh, <laughs> oh well, you only handle it once. There you go. Yeah. Bye bye. That's a good one. That was from your mom. That was a good one. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what about your dad? Uh, my dad's the finance guy, so he well, he's a lawyer, but um, he's you know obsessed with stocks and finances and stuff. And he so. was like, "Get an S corp." <laughs> yes no it's true like he all of his advice is about um how to manage your money and don't spend more than you have to you, like live yeah. modestly and save a lot and live a a, a good life but you, it doesn't need to be an extravagant life to be a good life um and that's how you you stay financially healthy i guess i don't know i mean it's, it's practical advice 
it's not very nurturing, but it's good practical, like financial advice. So it's so, yeah. I mean, I think becoming an actor kind of taught me that even though my parents had instilled that earlier of like, don't, don't, don't spend it until, don't spend it until there and, yep. and don't even spend it. Like yeah. just don't spend it, but it's mm -hmm. tough in this town, especially, you know, it's it, not so much again with the dads, but the moms are yeah. like, there's a reason Louis Vuitton store in Glendale got. <laughs> oh, it got smashed. Yeah, well, smash it's hard again. with the kids too, because now that my 19 year old is making his own money at the at the restaurant where he serves, he just wants to spend it because he's like he's got yeah. money. He doesn't have to beg mom. He doesn't, you know, he's just like he loves it. And so I'm like, yeah, let's why don't we start a savings because you have a car and it might need maintenance or you know save money for a rainy day. And he just wants to spend it because he has it. And I'm like, I get it, I get it. But so that's a that's another lesson where I'm trying to instill in the baby adult. You know, uh, that is something more. that this generation is. Uh, I had a fight with people where it's like they go, "Oh, come on, you deserve that jet ski. It's only twenty-one bucks a month for the next seventeen years, uh -huh. um, and you can enjoy it now." Yeah. <laughs> but nobody, there's a reason. Do you know this country has one trillion dollars of credit card debt? Oh, what? that's depressing. People that's in this almost country... as much money as a Barbie movie made this week. <laughs> that's right. Kind of... right? <laughs> <laughs> Bill Gates could literally just pay off everyone's yeah, credit like, card. Uh... But people are carrying $1 trillion of debt. That's which, and on a MasterCard, 26% because it's in Montana and they have mm. fiduciary laws that, that don't limit the amount of loan shark interest rates they can put on people's bills and and people yeah. do, they go, you know, listen, just the minimum payment, 41 bucks. That's all you got to pay. Don't worry mm. about it. Oh, well, you know, we'll the slope. interest rate. I know. I wish my dad was more like your dad because my dad, he had six kids and he sold cars. So he didn't really have any money to worry about yeah. in the investment. <laughs> it was all, it was all going into the day to day. Oh uh, yeah. To That's keep it alive. But since I grew older and then was like, yeah, and as an actor, especially you're like, Every job, you're like, I don't oh. know if I'm ever going to work again. This right. Day. You're like, I got to make this last. And so and people don't get that. People are like, oh, my God. You know, actors are so rich. And I'm like, no, like <laughs> I might have made a lot of money today, but then I might not work for another that's 360 right. days. So that's right. That's, Even you when you shoot the show, it. you're only shooting that show for, you know, four or five months of the year and the rest right. of the year. You're up, the rest of the year. It's yeah. like and yeah. the bad years have to pay for the good years. So mm -hmm. you have to. I mean, that is that's plan the for the bad years. People don't under. Stand yep. about, especially when it comes to like these strikes in the unions. Well, it's like, not just us. Our garbage didn't get picked up. LA trash workers <gasps> were on strike. So I mean, the yeah. the, wow. the monetary gap between the Uber rate. I mean, when a guy oh, has a five hundred million dollar yacht Come and a bunch on. of other kids don't have internet or fresh water in this country, something. Yep. I uh, love that fresh water wrong. and internet were in the same sentence. For you. <laughs> There's, there's oh, the, people the in this country without internet and they don't have fresh water. Like, too. right. But <laughs> like they're you kind of need important, both. Right. Have you ever tried to buy anything without, you can't even like you go to the store and they go, you got it. There's an app. There's just something. Or, I just got another casting app today. My agent sent me some new casting app. I got to uh, sign up for or something. Huh. Yeah. All right. Hello everyone. What did that say? Uh, hello, everyone. Can I give you my social security <laughs> yes, number? Josh. Did you not hear me running early? Absolutely. The cop said not to do yeah. that. Fantastic. No, not, Josh, please. Josh was not listening. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not the lesson. We're all going to sign off. I'm going to get ready. We're all going to sign off. I did laugh, though, security. because it's like we're all so private with our info. And they're like, well, AI can't. AI knows everything already about mm -hmm. you. It has all your photos on Instagram. It can hear your voice. Because that, you know, that's Weird. the new spamming is that there's an app where people can make it look like the phone calls coming from your child and then they can take their voice off of Instagram uh -huh. and talk into the phone. It will come out oh. like your son's voice and, it, and the thing will say, and he'll go like, Hey, I'm in jail in Mexico. It's, can you send three grand that have you seen that? That's what's That's happening. Terrifying. Oh, terrifying. Like the robots scare me. We don't I need more robots. We started dark and we're ending dark. This That's is how we always yeah. do it. Well, Parenthood is say, dark. It seems pretty Parenthood hard is dark. for the course. <laughs> Oh, uh, Andrea, can we talk uh, about your podcast, which sure. is very large? Thank um, you. Yeah, yeah, no, we just, we just, Jody Sweeten and I just launched um, a podcast. And uh, yeah, I have to be tedious here too. It's called How Rude Tanneritos. Mm -hmm. It's a rewatch podcast. We're very excited about it. And the reason why we can do it is because we got permission from Screen Actors Guild because we're providing services to iHeartMedia. iHeartMedia is not a struck company. Yes. So because Jody and I signed these contracts months ago before we before a strike was on the horizon, we need to honor those contracts with yeah. iHeartMedia. So 100%. that's why we're hosting a podcast. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's fun. It's hysterical. Jody and I have a great chemistry and banter, and I, I try to poke fun at her as much as I can. And uh, please check it out.
It's super funny. And there's a, there's a Instagram where you can even check out short little clips before you even go do the whole thing. It's fantastic. and stuff. Great. Too. Oh, thank you. I'm very excited about it. Uh, we're just we starting, are so, so excited to have you come do the show. Thank you so yeah, much absolutely. for coming and playing with us. Truly really such a treat. And Thank I you. think like if somebody said to me, like, what do you imagine Andrea Barber is? I'd be like, I imagine that she is as down to earth and kind as she is talented. Aww. And that is and that is a that is a large quantity of great traits right there. That is you so really, sweet. It is so true. That just it made is. my whole week. Thank you so much. I mean, that was, you are aww. a little too too nice, too yeah. honest. No, I, I I'll try to I'll be a, a raging biatch next time oh. and me into oh, I, honestly no, it was a nice me. counterbalance to the rest of us so it was yeah, exactly. really appreciated I'll try uh, to bring some light into the dark. if we go live on Thursdays we do not we are typically live Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. and you ah. can uh, listen to this on iTunes as well or wherever you get your podcast but um, cool. we did a very special Thursday night show because we were so excited to have Andrea Barber here we all wanted to make Yay. it up one up but we're typically well, Tuesday thanks, nights and we will be live next Thursday night with Reed Scott from uh, Venom, Veep, and the fabulous Mrs. Mizell. He will be here with us next oh, week. That is cool. true. And, uh, yeah, we got some great comics coming up. Uh, Jeff Foxworth, the Larry the Cable Guy, uh, Bill Ball. And a bunch That's of other awesome. peeps coming to buy. And and honestly, really great. Thank you for doing it. And it's more of a oh, round a table blast. and we like just chatting about stuff. I love it. No, here. this is great. I got to tune in next week too because this is fun. You guys are awesome. Love the camaraderie. Love the topics. Even love the darkness. You know, I'm here for all of it. <laughs> Listen, hey, we, we call it, you know, we typically call it as parental mental health night. And the problem is yes. a lot of people, you, you watch people's posts and they are sitting there saying, and they're so sincere and they're like, I'm losing it. I'm We're all hanging on by a thread that, Everyone is in credit card debt. And sometimes you think you're the only one. You're like, oh, my gosh, that's what happened to me. That's how this whole thing started. And I was like, is this what parenthood is? This is insanity. And then the more I talked to other people, everyone's like, oh, no, we're all it takes a village, you know, and so it's there's a camaraderie. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's dark it. and it's fun and it's what it is. But it just hopefully makes everyone else feel a little bit better about what they're going through, because we are we're all going through insanity. So um, that was it. Yep. Um, it. Thank you guys so much. Um, we're just going to wrap this whole beast and get it out of here. Thanks to everyone love for it. tuning in and all the comments were hilarious. We're sorry yeah. we couldn't get to everybody. Unfortunately, Andrea has too many fans. Nah. Yeah. Oh, right. no. Maybe she'll Thanks go for through. Up, we'll guys. go through later and we'll respond to each comment individually. Oh, nice. uh, we'll have to have you come back after the strike. Because yes. They're, then they're we can talk. Yeah, it's deal. open season and then we yeah. can talk about all the things we couldn't <laughs> talk about tonight. So we'll for see sure. you at the end of 2025. It's going to be a yeah. Don't you say oh, that. Oh, did it get Don't dark again right that. at the end? No. Jamie, why? You had it. You had it. I, um, it, it was a smooth again. sailing, uh, you know, outro, and then, gah. Lord My the partners in crime, Kate Mulligan, Jason Gowan, I'm Jamie Keeler, our wonderful guest this evening, Andrea Barber. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Thanks, definitely guys. check her out and check us out, and we'll see you guys next time here in the Parents Lounge. We'll see you live next Tuesday night at 10, 7 p.m. Pacific. Good night, everybody.